Okay, in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the critical path uh, method and uh, or CPM. And we're going to talk about project crashing. So um, we're still working from the same problem as before. So if you haven't drawn the network diagram for this CPM method, I encourage you to go and watch a previous video. We're going to be working off of this network diagram but we're gonna be talking about project crashing. So imagine the project is of critical priority to your organization and you are willing to dedicate additional resources which cost more money in order to accelerate the completion of the project. As a project manager, you're told that it would be ideal if the project were completed in 60 days rather than 68 days. And you're given a budget of $1,500 to accelerate this effort. And you're then told that suppose it is only possible um, to crash um, a project uh, by a maximum of two days. So you cannot accelerate a project by more than two days. And so we're given our tasks and our cost per day to crash. So effectively what we want to do when we're looking at project crashing is we want to look at um, which items cost the least amount of money to crash our project in order to accelerate our, our timelines. But importantly, they have to be on the critical path um, for them to have any impact on the completion of our project. So if we were just to look at this, our first inclination might be that Project J is appealing because it doesn't cost a lot of money to crash Project J by a day. It only costs $150 a day. So we can go up to our network diagram here and we can look at Project J and we can say, well, what if we were to crash this project, meaning that Instead of taking six weeks to complete Project J, it now takes five weeks to complete project or five days to complete Project J. So effectively turning six into five. Well, importantly, what we notice about Project J is that it's not on the critical path. In fact, there's already two days of slack in our system for Project J. So simply by reducing the amount of time that it takes to complete Project J actually isn't going to help us in terms of completing the job faster because there's already slack in the system at point J. So uh, even though J is appealing because J doesn't cost a lot of money, J is not on the critical path. We can do the same thing for other nodes. So like, let's look at point G for a second. So G you'll see has a slack of eight, 24 minus 16 are our latest start minus our earliest start gives us our slack. In which case we looked at G. G is also fairly appealing because G is also relatively inexpensive. But we know that it's not on our critical path, right? It's not along our critical path. So it's not going to speed up our project simply by taking fewer days to complete project G. So it wouldn't be a good investment there either. So we'll just, uh, for now... We'll scratch out G and we'll scratch out J because we've already identified that they're not along our critical path. Now, I'll just write, rewrite our critical path here. We, you know, I know you can see it, but our critical path, as we determined in the previous question, was A, C, D, H, I, K. And this was 68 days. So effectively, we can look at this network diagram and say, well, which of these points do we want to crash in order to accelerate our timeline? So of these points, A is 300, C is 400, H is 600, I is 200, and K is 300. So being the astute managers that we are, we're, let's pick I and say that we're going to um, crash I by two days. Okay, so um, crash I. And if we look at point I here, we could in fact speed it up because both J and K are dependent on the completion of point I, right? Both J and K. So whenever point I is done, J and K can begin. So in this case, we're going to crash I by two days. So two days 
times the $200 that it costs, which is equal to $400. And now we're at 68 minus two days. Okay, so really what we're at now is we're at 66 days. And we still have, how much money were we given? Well, we we're given $1,500, so we still have $1,100 left to crash this project. So we've used up I, so let's just kind of, uh, we'll, we'll highlight I here in green so we're not tempted to go back to it. Now we can look at other points along our critical path and we can determine which of those are attractive. So let's look at our next least expensive option here. Well, our next least expensive option is Project K. Right, that's our next least expensive option, or Project A, I guess. They're both, they're both, um, they're both equally as appealing. So why don't we go ahead and just say we're going to crash Project K. And how many days can we crash Project K? Well, we notice here that our end is dependent on the. Uh, right now on the end of K, we notice that the earliest possible finish for J is 66 weeks and K is along our critical path. So if we were to crash K by two days, we would um, accelerate the end as well. So um, this time we're going to crash K by two days times, what does this cost us? Cost us $300. So this is then $600. And we're now down to 64 days. And we have $500 remaining. 400 plus 600 gives us $500 remaining. So again, we're going to look at our critical path and we're going to identify, well, what are other options along our critical path here? We notice now that J would technically be along our, our critical path as well. Um, but we cannot, but by, if we crash K, J, sorry. So it, it's now along our critical path because of the following. If we crashed I by two days, whoops. If we crashed I by two days, so where it was 10, it's now eight which means that this is now, instead of 60, it's now 58, which means that J can now start at 58 weeks, which means it can now finish at 64 weeks. And we crashed K by two days. So instead of eight weeks, it's now six weeks and it can start at 58 weeks, which brings us then to 64. 64 days, sorry, I keep saying weeks instead of days, but effectively same thing. So if in this case, and we'll, why don't we just get rid of this because it may be adding some confusion. So now, we're at 64 days is our earliest possible completion, right? Just like we said, and let's now just erase this. So we're at 64 days, right? So if we were to go to J, because J is appealing to us, because J is only $150, if we were to crash J by a week, well, then our critical path then would be still K because it would take the... K cannot finish before 64 weeks at this point. So in that case, it's not appealing to us to crash J, at least not at this point. <clears throat> okay. Our next um, approach here is going to be looking at other points that are along our critical path. Um, so in this case, let's go to crash A. And we have $500 left. So if we crash A by one day, 
because we can't crash A by two days because it's more money than we have, times 300. Well, this will equal $300. So now we've spent um, $1,300 and we've crashed A by one day. So if we crash A by one day, what does that do? Well, we can look and look at the ripple effect through here. So where A originally took seven weeks, seven 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 nineteen right and it ripples through our entire system here Nineteen plus eighteen. Well, it's going to be thirty-seven. So this is thirty-seven. Thirty-seven plus twelve is forty-nine. Forty-nine. Maybe forty-nine here. Forty-nine plus eight is fifty-seven. Means that's 57 plus 6, 63. 57 plus 6, 63. Right? Now, technically, we'd want to go through this and say, well, latest possible finish, 63 minus 6, 57, and so on and so forth. But effectively, you get the, you get the point here. We're now at 63 days. Right, so we went from what was 68 days to now we're at 63 days. And we've spent a total of $1,300. Now the question is, is there anything else that we can afford to crash at this point? Well, we only have $200 remaining of our $1,500 budget. And let's look at the projects that we've crashed because we can rule those out now at, at this point. So let's look at the projects we've we've crashed and we'll rule them out. So we've crashed I already. We can no longer use I. We've crashed it by two days. We've crashed K by two days, so we can no longer crash K. We've crashed A by one day, so we can no longer crash K. Point G, which is something we could afford. No, we couldn't even afford it. 250. We have to spend less than $200. So the only point we could crash here is J. But we notice that finishing J one week early or one day early is not going to impact the overall completion of our project because we have this point here, K, for which the earliest possible finish is 63 weeks. It's on par with J. So even if we finished J one day early at 62 days, uh, we'd still be waiting on completion of uh, project K to finish up our project. So the answer to your manager, if they were to ask you this is, well, we can accelerate the timeline by five days. It's going to cost $1,300 and we're going to invest in crashing uh, project I by two days, project K by two days and project A by one day. And that is effectively project crashing. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.